A small-scale solid rocket motor was successfully tested May 27th at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center. The 21-second firing tested a NASA subscale motor designed as a versatile, quick turnaround, and low-cost way to determine the performance of new materials and designs. Finding adequate parts replacements for highly reliable systems used in human spaceflight programs involves extensive testing and qualification efforts. It gives engineers here at Marshall hands-on experience with these materials, with these processes of these materials, so that we can be engaged in what's going on full scale and as well as keeping us technically sharp. Testing a subscale version of a rocket motor is a cost-effective way to assess new materials, technologies, or processes and rapidly evaluate performance.
that for you. you could... Yeah, and until I'm able yeah, to rub my yeah, fingers. Yeah, really good. Um, but yeah, other than that, and other than. Oh, would it be 10? That's what, well, that's what I'm saying. Oh, it didn't flat. do it there. Yeah. Oh. T4? <laughs> Four. <laughs> Our subscale motor is a single segment subscale motor. It's, uh, the segment is 108 inches long and 24 inch is the designation we give it because it's a, a 24 inch diameter case. The nozzle is, is in a pretty extreme environment. It's about, it sees about 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit and uh, pressures of about um, 600, 650 PSI. Just generally, um, subscale testing is there for us to use as a tool um, so that we can look at new materials, new processing, new design, anything that changes if we come up with obsolescence issues. Um, this is a, a first look that, that we can see what kind of effect they're going to have on, on our performance of our, of our motors. It gives engineers here at Marshall hands-on experience with these materials, with these processes of these materials, so that we can be engaged in what's going on full scale, and as well as keeping us technically sharp, so that when issues come up with uh, flight hardware or with our full-scale test programs, that we're able to better answer questions. We have the experience with these materials. They've been a wonderful team to work with, and to be able to follow the whole test from, from the design, from, from starting the contract, and through the design, through the manufacturing and assembly, to the test date is, is very rewarding. And uh, now I can't wait to, to see what, what the data we get out of this, and, and uh, which I'm positive we've got a wonderful test bed here. It's very exciting. It's it's a it's a pretty nerve-wracking 21 seconds, <laughs> but but it's very exciting and very rewarding. For this nozzle, for this nozzle, we uh, we redesigned the contour of the nozzle to represent future full-scale motors. Um, and in developing that design, we had to go through the, the analyses to prove that it would be safe to test. The nozzle directs the forces coming out of the motor and creates the thrust necessary to lift the vehicle off a pad. Our goal is to, is to push the limits of the material here so that we will have safe full-scale tests and flight motors in the future. Our primary objectives were the nozzle, but these tests are useful to pretty much everyone within solid propulsion. Um, we have on this test a, some propellant objectives. They're going to learn about uh, cracks and and how they would how they would perform during a full-scale motor and we also have some individuals taking some plume impingement um, measurements they're looking at the acoustic and vibration loads that a solid rocket would create on a vehicle as future heavy lift vehicles are developed um, we'll be able to adapt our subscale test to meet the, those designs and the material needs that we'll have for those vehicles. Our team was composed of young engineers and, and experienced engineers, and it really was a great, uh, a great experience working with all of them as the younger engineers uh, developed the hands-on experience that those that have been here longer have gotten through the shuttle program over the years.